for construction projects that will be done here in the Chester Upland School District. It is a supplemental agenda item A1 only, A1 awarding a bid for uh, work at Main Street, Toby Farms, and district wide for bathroom, tile replacement, locker rooms. All right. With that being said, I will turn it over to the superintendent for his report. All right, thank you, Receiver Nichols. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, just wanted to make a quick announcement. Uh, Mariana, our school board rep, will not be present tonight. We have Malachi joining us tonight, so Malachi will be giving a student report. And we want to congratulate Mariama, who is representing um, Chester Upland School District. She was the uh, number one uh, high Q, high Q um, participant. So congratulations to Mariama. She's at a banquet right now receiving an award. So um, I think the presentation, oh, is it up, Troy? I didn't get anything. Okay, it was emailed to T3. Um, we'll so next week. Yep, we'll do it next week. Um, just really quick, let me just highlight a few things. I'll just go off the top of my head. So um, we had the opportunity to meet with Senator Kane, Representative Kruger, and um, Representative Kazim this past week um, to talk about some current issues in the district, some things that we're looking for support, um, some financial support, obviously, some work with our facilities. They actually toured the district with us. It was a great meeting, great opportunity to spend the day with them. Um, so the rest of the report will be provided next, uh, next month, very short. But that was the main thing, the, the time that we spent with the representative. So we'll pass it over to Malachi. Oh, I'm sorry, Malachi, I, forgot. I wasn't cutting your report short. I thought you were doing a high Q. No, no, I had actually my, my report. Oh, okay. So you, you want to continue? Yeah. No, we're going we to finish it. I mean, I don't, I mean, that was pretty much the gist of it, the information okay. about it. So we will have a, we'll, we'll, have probably, have a, we'll, we'll probably have a special meeting to award more bids uh, in a week or so, so you can most certainly. Yeah, we'll finish it then. Yeah. Okay. It was, you know, that was the main thing, the um, information about Senator King. Malachi, I apologize. No problem. Um, as our superintendent stated, uh, Mariama couldn't be here because of a dinner and which she might be excluded, uh, awarded within a, schol a scholarship, which is really nice for her, and I know she's super happy about that and having the opportunity for such a thing. Uh, so, right now, currently with our school, there's not really much going on. Currently, we're taking, uh, I think, the ninth graders are getting PSSAs and all that. Uh, Next, this week coming, following up, our, is our AP testing week, so many of our students, many of our AP students will be taking their tests, that we study for. And I know they're a little nervous about that because I'm one of those students, and so is Mariama. But yeah, we've been studying hard, and I hope, you know, everyone that is currently in AP class, you know, passes it, and we all, you know, have a good time. Um, along with that, there's really not much going on. Everyone's making their, you know, final preparations for prom, getting their suits and ties and nice dresses, and I hope everyone looks great for that. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, there's one last thing. The Annaberry Science Symposium, which I was actually a part of, had happened, I believe, I believe, I was there, <laughs> two weeks ago. And so, what had happened, no, last week, ah, apologies. It had last week. And so what had happened with us is we had done a presentation on skin grafting, the Science Symposium being, you know, uh, a medical representation of some form of maybe procedure or you know some health com complications and me and my group did skin grafting and so as a presenter myself working on the presentation and project I did a little speaking for that which was you know a good time for everyone there were a few other students I mean a few other students a few other schools there and you know everyone had a great time it was well it was nice everyone's presentations were really good and i would like to shout out all my you know presenters for their courage and bravery <laughs> bravery going up there and having a nice time but uh on the skin grafting thing you know it took it took a while it took a whole quarter of our school to uh you know get the information we needed to learn about skin grafting and you know learn how the procedure is done and we watch a few videos on it and so you know, overall, it was good for everyone. Everyone was working well together. It was a good, you know, example of how students from each grade can come together and learn about, you know, science, put the, not this mathematics, put, you know, our STEM abilities at work. Learning mathematics, well, learning what we need to get screen grafting and process, putting the S in science for STEM. So, 
That was great for everyone, and that's all I really have to report. Thank you for listening to me. Congratulations. All right, we will now move on to our presentations. We have three presentations this evening. We have Mr. Franklin, our college and career readiness counselor. Mr. Franklin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Before I get started, let me just introduce myself and give you guys a little perspective on the language that I'm working with to see our students do. Um, my name is Edward Franklin. I'm the college and career counselor here for the district. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. So in terms of my environment and background, it's very similar to what a lot of our students are engaging and dealing with as far as social economic status and living in situations and things of that nature. Um, and my background is in higher education. So before working here at Chester Upland, I spent time working in the Baltimore City Public School District, as well as working at four different institutions of higher learning. Um, this is the thing that I'm most passionate about, so thank you guys for giving me an opportunity to come before you today. Um, the first thing that I wanted to touch on, as you guys might see on this screen, is some of the circumstances that we've inherited in terms of working with this 12th grade class. Um, I would refer to our students as part of the COVID class. Um, some of the images that you might see are our 12th grade students were the ones who had half of their ninth grade year taken away due to COVID. Um, many of them were, all of them were virtual for their entire 10th grade year. Um, and that transition from traditional learning to virtual learning was not the easiest for them to try to then transition back into the classroom for the 11th grade year and now we're expecting them to be ready to go on to college. Um, I believe that while some people might look at these students at, at risk, I prefer to look at them at promise. Um, I feel like, and I know you all feel the same way that our students have the ability to do and go wherever it is that they would like to. Along with that, nationally, we also see that there's been a trend of teaching shortages. So a lot of our students are not receiving the adequate classroom time that they might need to in major subject areas, which is also a major factor in their college and career readiness. And I would say the last factor is the teamwork that has to occur between the students, administrators and teachers within the schools, as well as parents, um, which are all very important pieces. Can you next slide, please? Um, while we have done a, an amazing job of creating spaces and opportunities for our students to get the things that they need uh, to help prepare them for college and or career. Um, if you guys look at the screen, we have conducted various FAFSA workshops to date. This year we've already conducted five at both STEM Academy and at Chester High School. Um, we have provided scholarship workshops every Wednesday for two hours from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., as well as making sure that students have the ability to get assistance with scholarship and college applications during their lunch periods at both STEM Academy and at Chestnut High School. Um, thanks to the willingness and the donations and the board for uh, valuing exposure and exploration, our students have gone on two week-long college tours where they were able to visit over 14 colleges. They have gone on at least nine local college tours where that includes colleges like Lincoln, Cheney, Westchester Temple, St. Joe's, Philadelphia Trade Union, Williamson, for the different engagement that the students are interested in, as well as participating in two large-scale college and career fairs. Um, these experiences are what allow students to start believing in themselves in a different way. It allows them to see what opportunities are available for them. And if I'm being honest with you, that's actually something that propels them to actually want to do more. I think when you see a student receive that first college acceptance, I've never seen the gas get pushed as much when someone knows, wow, someone gave me an opportunity and or I'm, this is something that I can do and now it's something that I actually would like to do. So I think us providing our students with these opportunities must continue. Um, to date, uh, we, our students have a plethora of college acceptances, and they're still rolling in. Uh, many of the scholarships that our students have applied to are still 
in proxy. Many of the deadlines have not passed already, so we're still waiting to see what that yield will look like. Um, we actually have a decision day event that's gonna be coming up this Monday for all of the students who have been accepted to various colleges for us to be able to celebrate them and congratulate them. Um, so if any of you all are free, I would really appreciate if you guys uh, decided to come on out. Um, Mr. Franklin, where will that be? That will be located here in the Chester High Gymnasium at 5 p.m. Okay, 5 p.m. Monday. Yes. Um, the, um, another announcement in terms of dates on June the 6th, we will be having our class day. Um, we've been intentional about reaching out to various organizations and classes um, who have historically given money to the students here from Chester to reinvigorate that connection and that engagement um, on social media. We've created videos enticing and asking them to give their time, their treasure uh, to the students who have done the work and have shown the promise of wanting to further their education. And Mr. Frank, I'm sorry, sometimes I, I, it's a traditional class day, both schools together? Correct. Okay. Um, so overall, the main purpose for me being here today is to let you all know that we are doing the best that we can, that we are doing great work, and there still is a much more work to be done. Um, this is my first year here in the district, and I can honestly say I love the students. Uh, the relationship that we're building, it's a, it's a true example of what believing in one another can do. Because in the same way how we're believing in the students, they're believing in us and hoping that we're advocating and we're providing them with the things that they need in order to move to the next level. And I think we've all done that. So thank you guys for the opportunity to be able to give you all some updates on some of the things that the Chester Upland School District is doing for our students around college career readiness. As we come closer to the end of the year, I hope to have a much more great information to share with you all about what we've done. That was, that was my question. <laughs> Mr. Franklin, I just was going to say, I may invite you back next month. Uh, I would like a sneak peek before class day to see exactly that dollar amount, number of you know, college accept acceptances and uh, uh, Yes, the dollar amount of the scholarships, the, the number of colleges, students, and all that good stuff. Okay. And class day, I'll be dressed up. It's my birthday, so I'll be there. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you guys a, a scholarship. Hey, thank you. All right, next we have Mr. Brown, principal of Chester High School. Thank you. Uh, hey, everyone, the board and uh, distinguished guests students um, and community members. Uh, Chester High School has been experiencing uh, a lot of positive things. Uh, and before I get into the presentation, I wanted to acknowledge and celebrate two of our long-term teachers who retired, uh, Dr. Dolores Wright, who oh. served us 41 years. Oh. Oh. significant not only to the community but to the school district. Two-thirds of the staff that teach at Chester High School uh, now were her students. So wow. that's an acknowledgement wow. and a positive turnaround. So we hope we can reproduce that uh, the rest of our staff. Also, uh, Ms. Rosalind Amagazi March, science teacher, um, very committed to teaching our students in biology and uh, environmental science, also retired. Uh, again, what she's done this evening. I have company with me, uh, three of our students who will uh, give you some insight to some of the activities and um, positive things that's going on in Chester High School. Next slide, please. So, to uh, all three students uh, attended the college tour, as Mr. Franklin stated, is a, a very, very positive impact for our students. Um, but before I go into that aspect of it, I want to thank the community, uh, the Chester City community and organizations, organizations within Chester who helped to make it possible for Chester High students to go on a college tour and have a fabulous time with an abundance of what they needed to make the experience fruitful and, and uh, rewarding for them. So uh, my first student that I'll bring up is uh, Mr. Jamil. He's our 10th grade president. 
and he's going to speak to what, what his experience was at the college tour. President and uh, as a temp year, probably saying why she's going to college tour. But I wanted to go to experience what it's like to be a college student. Like I wanted to go to get a the information. I know I I can't uh, apply to colleges to talk my in my eleventh grade year, but I wanted to experience how it was. Um, our first stop was uh, uh, Virginia State. Um, it was cold, but. Uh, <laughs> A fun time, honestly, it's a fun time. Um, yeah, it, was, it was a fun time, it was a great time. We had a lot of fun, lots of laughter. Um, definitely, definitely would do it again, all over again. Um, yeah. Okay, um, 36 acceptance. help us go on this college tour. I want to encourage y'all to do this more in the future because it provided a sense of opportunity for our kids and it gave us this feeling that we're not stuck and we have opportunities and we're able to go to these amazing places. And for me, I wasn't really thinking about going to college, but now I really do want to go to college and my commit school of choice will be after my 12th grade year is North Carolina A&T. <laughs> It was fun building, getting to see, travel the world, especially with these guys. Just that it's not only people in the city of Chester that go through struggles, but people that came far, other kids, they've gone through things, and they've made it out, and they've on the way to be our future doctors, nurses, lawyers, policemen, fire to fire, just do everything, get a college case from coming out of that high school. It was great. I really enjoyed it. I think more kids would love this experience. And... Hopefully that you know, we just keep this going, especially from our Chester Upland School District. And I just want to thank you guys for allowing this to happen and making this happen. It was really a pleasure. And that's all I can say. So as you see on the screen, we had 13 students that were seniors that attended. We had other students that attended. We had 10th graders and 11th graders. Again, as Jamil spoke about that experience, uh, and he, even as he talked about the mindset change, so this was a really positive experience with 36 acceptance. And as Mr. Franklin stated, there are additional letters coming in for students to be uh, accepted in the colleges as well. Next slide. <clears throat> so uh, this young man, um, Milan Sutler Jones, uh, is a very unique student. This student right now couldn't be here tonight because he's at um, Newman University. Uh, receiving a leadership completion certificate. He actually winning a four-year scholarship of participating in their leadership. Wow. Um, our, at Chester High School, our cosmetology program, uh, for, for, I'm biased, but for what it's worth, uh, is an outstanding program, and we produce some outstanding students. Uh, they went to the New York Hair Show and their participation in the hair show got them acknowledged for what they do as high school students from industry certified individuals who acknowledge them for being there uh, in, their, in their presence as well as uh, their, their demeanor and their knowledge about the uh, cosmetology career field. Uh, they also do community work. As you can see, they went to the senior nursing home and they, they, they had a makeup day, a dress up day, and they made it nice for seniors in, the, in, their, uh, in their setting to enjoy that new refreshed feeling. And again, that's, you know, that's what we're teaching. We're not just teaching cosmetology, we're teaching citizenship, we're teaching productivity, and also we're teaching a sense of community. When they go out into the community and they share the skills and the things that they've learned, it speaks volumes not only to the school district but also to themselves. Next slide, please. 
our staff celebrations. We started a new process where we acknowledge our staff and students. We always did a honor roll celebration for the students, but now we have a, a staff acknowledgement as well, where staff members, staff members of the month, uh, they get lunch uh, paid for by Chester High School administration. They get principal parking up front of the school, two parking spots. Now, well, this, we have five recipients this month, so five spots. And they get their name on the uh, inside marquee by the main office for acknowledgement as well. Um, something that trying to change the culture and the attitude and just the overall disposition so that our staff feel appreciated, not just by the students, but also by the administration. And uh, seems to be working out really well because after the ceremony was over, it was like, well, you only have five recipients? Well, we'll make as many parks as possible we need to next month. So right. it's something that they're looking forward to and something that we're proud of doing. Uh, our biggest and most significant um, acknowledgement outside of the HBCU tour and the other items we talked about was our map assessment data. Chester High School, uh, as you can see, we had uh, 187 students. Out of the 277 students, show growth and what that represents. We have some students who are still in the red zone, some still in the yellow, and some who have advanced. But within those zones, from the fall to the winter assessment, they have moved forward. We had 12, 12 pages of students, which equates to 249 students overall who showed academic growth uh, in ELA and math. So that is one of our really proud accomplishments we actually had a ceremony for the students where we acknowledged them by giving them a small token of appreciation. And again, you know, we're looking forward to, we just had not assessment testing this week and next week, looking to see even a stronger sense of growth on our next assessment. So we, uh, again, something we're proud of for our students and staff working together to show some academic growth. Uh, with our school improvement plan, um, we exceeded our initial goal was 70%, and we're at 80.14% now for student attendance. Um, we have established, uh, we had two steering committee meetings where we have student involvement, community uh, residents involved. We have a probation officer, a uh, person that works over at the Boys and Girls Club, and we also have students who actively are engaged in providing data for our school improvement plan. The sessions have been successful for the staff and the students, and uh, we have another meeting scheduled, I believe, May 1st, to move to our data assessment needs and also start talking about what we want to do for the future year coming. Next slide. So, my other student that's here with me, Ms. Destiny Bay, she is a member of the Chester dance team started by one of our newest staff members who just came on board this year. And I'll bring Ms. Bay up to talk about the dance team and their activity. My name is Destiny Bay, and as Mr. Brown said, that I am a former member. Actually, I'm the captain of the dance team that is called the Cliff Fest. We started in the middle of the school year, so we wasn't able to make it for basketball season nor football season, but we will be there next school year for football season and basketball season. We have performance side, Chester's Got Talent, and we actually liked the performance. We was all pretty nervous, but for most of it, we had fun. We was all able to join forces, put all our problems to the side. Ooh. Put all our problems to the side and actually get to know one, one another and um, and um, how are we going to say? Oh yeah, we will have we will be performing at the upcoming events on May 5th, which is I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Citrus Appreciation Day. We're performing there. We will also be performing at the end of the school year celebration. I believe. I'm sorry. And it's one other performance. We wasn't told what it was, but we do have three upcoming performances that we are getting ready for. 
And I would like to just say thank you for letting us get the dance team together because this is something that a lot of students wanted. So thank you. Thank you. So again, there was a lot of uh, success successful activities that uh, Chester High School participated in. The, the, science, the science fair uh, was a unique and really uh, positive experience. A lot of students um, who participated were really excited about their acknowledgments. It's two of our students receiving awards for their participation uh, in that activity. So career fairs. Chester High School and STEM High School Academy uh, hosted a career fair on April 20th, and then uh, that was uh, attended by 21 vendors where our students were given information for multiple career opportunities. And this young lady went to a career fair about seven years ago. She was working at Wawa long enough where she was able to receive college money from Wawa, and now she's working in the medical field. Uh, positive activities to build bond and, and relationships with our student and staff. Uh, Coach Dante Bell, our athletic director, helped put on a student staff basketball game. was attended by a lot of students. Students got a chance to have fun. The, uh, the staff, even more fun, because they believe they won. Uh, they believe. They believe. Uh, you know, with the help of some... <laughs> and then, again, you know, again, it's, it's clean fun and then students got a chance to interact with staff members on a different basis and, and get to know each other outside of your normal classroom setting textbooks. And again, it just was a good opportunity for them to build relationships. And no workers' comp claims. That was great. No, no, that's good. <laughs> Probably a lot of being gay, but no workers' comp claims. <laughs> uh, something that we're also excited about that we've been doing that's uh, really a positive impact for our marketing students is they perform our weekly uh, telecast. Every Friday, uh, we have students that work with T3 and their staff to put on a telecast for, um, for the school district and just let them know what activities are going on throughout the week and uh, some positive things. Uh, this is our giveaway closet donations from community folks and organizations to help dress our students so they can go to the prom and feel good about themselves and look well. We also had a skating event that was, again, student driven, staff sponsored. Uh, students, again, had another opportunity to enjoy some activities outside of the daily routine of school. We also have the Clipper Closet where items are being donated in support of the students from health and beauty aids the hygiene products, as you can see, first aid kits, students maintain it, and again, it's something really positive for our students to have within the high school. So if they, you know, just put in a request, they can go there and see those items. Um, Thursday, uh, we have the, the anti-violence, which is tonight, that's why we wanted to put to do our presentation early, to go, with, uh, we have 19 students that's attending the anti-violence summit that's put on by the local labor union. We also have partnered with the local labor union and they will be providing our student with OSHA 10 certification uh, May 2nd and 3rd. They will be going to the facility to be trained. Um, our Young Explorers program uh, with the support of Ms. Jackie Goldstein and, and uh, Mr. Laws. We have 12 students there that permanently, permanently are recruited in that program as well, and they attend that regularly. Again, we receive accreditation for being in the Fire Explorers program. So again, we have a lot of activity, a lot of positive things going on, and uh, most importantly is the big event of the year is our fashion show. Partnership with Bountiful Blessings. This year, the fashion show is Saturday. Come out, let us watch our students strut their stuff and put on uh, a good show. All right. Yes. Uh, the date is April 29th, right? Is it 29th? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's my fault. Yeah. yeah, it's 29th. All right. Yeah. Come on. Come on. What I 
I did want to give a shout out to Miss King because a lot of this stuff is ran through the marketing program and through her. So our Clippers Closet, our giveaway, and uh, our dance competition, she is the one that puts that in place. So shout out to our students that did win, actually. And I didn't know we had a science fair. So we should definitely keep doing that. <laughs> but yes, yeah, shout out to Miss King, y'all. Give her a props and Miss King. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Principal Thank Brown. You. <laughs> All right, now we will have our career and technical uh, education director, Dr. Thompson. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. The most exciting time. We're going to talk more about CTE and our students and what they're doing. But first, I'm going to show you a quick two minute video on what is CTE. A lot of people ask that. Everyone wants kids to be ready to take on the real world, right? So what's the secret? Say hello to CTE. CTE is career technical education. Maybe you've never heard of it, but CTE gives learners an academic foundation along with technical skills and hands-on experience in a whole bunch of different areas to help them get ready for the real world. Think of CTE as a high school experience, but with even more value because it fills a big gap for a lot of students. In fact, CTE learners and their parents are three times as likely to say they're very satisfied with the ability to learn real-world skills as part of their education as compared to non-CTE learners and their parents. And since over 75% of CTE learners enroll in post-secondary education after high school, CTE is definitely creating a path to college and career success. And get this, they have a graduation rate over 10% higher than non-CTE students. Did you know 89% of parents think students should receive more education about career choices while in high school? That's where CTE comes in. Think about it. Is it better to experiment with career choices when you're paying money to do so in college? Or should it happen in high school so students know a lot earlier whether a career option is the right fit? The answer is fairly obvious. Don't you think? Now let's talk about why CTE is good for business and industry. It's pretty simple. Companies want skilled employees, and they're having a hard time finding them, which can cost the company money and lost productivity. Enter CTE. Six of the positions are in technical fields or require a CTE background. In fact, about half of all CTE learners are enrolled in programs in leading fields such as healthcare, STEM, and information technology, matching employer needs with student passions. CTE programs directly connect learners in high school and post-secondary with employers through internships, apprenticeships, and other meaningful on-the-job experiences. When it comes to CTE, more than twice as many CTE parents report being satisfied with internship opportunities. That means a lot of doors are being opened for kids. So here's the bottom line. Parents want their kids to find a career they can be passionate about. Kids want the same thing. And when you think about the real world, what could be better than having learners enter a field they know is right for them with a ton of hands-on experience? It's all possible thanks to CTE. <laughs> so I want to talk about the CTE programs that we currently have in the district. So we have four at Chester High School. Automotive, Culinary Arts, Cosmetology, and Marketing. At STEM, we have Engineering and Communications Technology. What we're looking to add made an application to the state to offer agriculture and a K through 12 teachers academy starting next year. We already offer computer IT and criminal justice at the high school. It just isn't under the umbrella of CTE, so we're actually going to apply for them to be part of CTE. So we would actually have an offering of 10, 10 CTE courses. Starting next year, this is new, we're gonna offer ninth graders career exploration. So they will have an opportunity to choose each marking period one of these career paths so they can get a chance to experience it, to see if it's something that they're interested in. So we're looking to grow our CTE programs by the time they hit 10th grade, they'll know which one of these pathways they want to take. CTE is heavily regulated. There are state requirements, federal requirements, and we go through a process called 339 every five years. So we're not up next year, we get to prepare next year, but the following year, we're gonna be under review. 
So they're going to come in and they're going to check to make sure that we have an occupational advisory committee. That's people that are in the community, in the field, that work in all of the different pathways that are supporting our programs, letting our teachers know what's happening in the industry, what needs to change, what they need to update in curriculum, and they're working directly with us. We actually had a banquet for them last night to just thank them for their support, so we're really excited about that. Perkins, obviously we know we get grants from the federal government. Money has to be spent by the deadline and it has to be spent on what they said we can purchase. Student organizations. We, every single pathway has a student organization. It's a requirement. We actually get tick marks off, points off, when we don't have students participating. So we have to make sure that all of our students are signed up, that they're going to the workshops, that they're participating because we do get points taken off for not participating. And finally, NOCTI. We have certification exams for every single pathway. What does this do? It says to the employer that I've been in a CTE program for three years, following a task grid, learning all these specific things that I need to make me employable, and when I take this NOCTI, it says to the employer, this candidate is qualified. They know what they're doing they get a certification. And so that's very important. We take the Noctis in both the fall and in the spring. Next up, our community partners. We have lots of community partners. All of them aren't listed here, but I did want to highlight Delcora and CMP. We actually have communications technology students and marketing students that are doing co-ops right now. They've been doing a co-op every Tuesday for the past couple of months, they'll be wrapping up soon. Um, and it's really exciting because they're producing content, they're in the workplace demonstrating their skills. We also have engineering students that are working uh, with Delcora and CMP. And then obviously we have our automotive students working at Jiffy Lube, uh, GMC, and AutoZone. So it's really exciting that our partners are helping us prepare our students for that workplace. Other highlights? We have an engineering student that is guaranteed a job at MakerBot, making fifty thousand dollars as soon as he walks across the stage. Whoa. Engineering, right out of high school, fifty k guaranteed. We have seven more students that are in the Delaware Community College program. They're in the two-year electromechanical program. Those students too are going to be making that kind of money when they finish with uh, community college. So that's really exciting. That's unheard of. 50K right out of high school engineering student. Mm -hmm. So he'll be able to help pay to further his career, right? He'll be able to use his money to uh, continue his studies at college. You heard earlier about our culinary students. They won second place in the, uh, the science fair. They created a water filtration system. So we want to send them to Shark Tank so someone can fund them <laughs> So we can get their filtration system on, on, the, on the line because it's marketable. They created an uh, actual filtration system that we can use. We need that. We have a marketing student that was accepted into WHYY's filmmaking program. And the biggest thing, I talked about my team earlier, I want to talk about our scores. Our marketing students and our culinary students didn't do too well during the fall. They hit their targets this spring. Really exciting. Yeah. Yes. And then on top of that, our cosmetology students in the fall, you know, some of them did okay, but this time every single one of them passed. And they passed at the advanced level. Not just passed, they passed at the advanced level. So I'm really excited about that. They will, they're actually going to be applying to the state. Uh, next week for their certifications for cosmetology. This is an example of one of our teachers, our engineering teacher. He was recognized by Itopia Labs, which is part of Google Education. Um, he's recognized for his creativity in the lab and in, in uh, engineering. So we have teachers that are on the national stage presenting and representing the district. Um, you've already seen this video, so I'm not going to play it long. This is just an example of our students working in the community. 
Uh, we heard uh, Mr. Brown, Principal Brown, talk about our students out in the community, giving that day of beauty for our ladies at the Senior Center. So we're doing great things in CTE. I'm really excited about the program, excited to be here the whole eight months. <laughs> but we, but we have, uh, additional things that are planned and so that's CTE. Thank you. Thank you to all of our presenters tonight. It was a lot of great information. Good things are happening in Chester Upland School District. And I guess that's a, a segue. Wanted to report to the community that we did have a status update hearing this week in Judge Dozier's uh, courtroom where we had the Department of Education attend and some community members, board members, myself and the administrative team here in Chester Upland School District. Uh, where the administrators and myself did offer testimony to Judge Dozier. Uh, if I had to say, I think it was some positive feedback. We were able to have Judge, well, we, we didn't have Judge Dozier do anything because he's, he's the judge, but he recognized uh, the fact that even the funding levels here in the Chester Bay School District aren't where they should be and, and you know, made it clear for the record that PDE and some other legislators needed to do something to ensure that, you know, we get the adequate funding needed to survive here in Chester Upland. Uh, outside of that, the report card or report that we got back was that he was pleased with the presentation. There was an emphasis on us doing more around the arts here in Chester Upland School District as we are moving in that direction. We're happy and pleased to have a lot of our you know, ESSER dollars committed, and we actually had the equipment come in, it's tagged and starting to be rolled out uh, for the arts. So that was that was another highlight that D Judge Dozier talked about. Uh, moving right along into that, oh, and a copy of the receiver's report is available on the district's website for anyone's review, the latest report for uh, quarter three of this year. So outside of that, I'll move on to the approval of the minutes from the meeting held on March 23rd, 2023. The minutes for the meeting held on March 23rd, 2023 are hereby approved. And at this time, uh, the sign-in sheet please for public comment. Again, public comment will be for three minutes. Each individual state your name and address for the record. We will ask that you give and offer all of your public comment and or ask your question. And we will respond within the three business days posted to the website. Thank you, uh, Ms. Deneen Mosley, folio number 49110170300. Good evening, Deneen Mosley. I actually have two questions and a comment on the first item. First item is E1. Um, I have a question in regards to the stipend for an assistant athletic director. My question, is this a position that was newly created? And my statement is, if it is a position that was newly created, um, I thought that we were looking to kind of cut costs by streamlining, and we already have a full-time athletic director that is a full-time position that was elevated higher than any athletic director that I've ever seen in this district. And I'm really questioning why we are adding an assistant athletic director when the athletic director is already earning a six-figure salary. That is my first concern. Um, my second concern, because I only have three minutes, is under uh, item... C14, uh, a payment to Schrader, and my questions are, I did not see this um, item listed on the RFP on the website, and so um, my question is, was due diligence done uh, to follow the process and your listing in your agenda? A A one A contract agreement and nothing is attached, so I have no way to view that to see what that award is for, and I do not see any RFP listed on your website. 
So I need to know, did we follow protocol with that uh, provider? Okay. Those are my two questions on the agenda items. So for you, athletic director. Yeah, the assistant athletic director has been a position that's been. It's the, not a position, it's just a stipend. A stipend, not thank you. But it's just a stipend for an individual who works in the district. So same as all the other coaches, they're specified yes. on the stipend that's listed in the professional contract. Yes. Right, but if you have a full-time athletic director, do you need an assistant athletic director? That's not. It's a, it's a professional contract position. So you're not contractually obligated. You're not answering my question. If we have somebody that's getting paid a full-time salary to be the athletic director, do we need an assistant athletic director? And you do, Ms. Mosley. The assistant athletic director primarily works for the middle school. They support the middle school sports, where the athletic director traditionally supports the high school sports. So you're, you're speaking to somebody that went to school here and know the people that serve as the athletic director, as a part-time position, and they did it for the entire stipend position. Yes. So okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm really asking us: Is that needed? And can those responsibilities be covered under your athletic director, which is a full-time position? That's yeah. what we really need to be considering. Thank you. And then Ms. Ray. Chief. Yes, so Schrader is, what do you want, you want me to speak to Schrader? Yeah. Or Irv, is Irv, though? Yeah, so, yes, yeah. yeah, fine. You can respond within your three days if you're not able to speak to it tonight. I would say we'll respond to you in three days okay. with the trader. So let me just ask a point of clarity for agenda item questions versus general public comment. You you can respond in the three days for agenda item questions? Yes. Okay. All right. All right, Ms. Caramaya. Agenda item. Agenda item. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Karen Maya, 904 Fusion Street, Chester, PA. Um, agenda item, what is it, C6. Why are we sharing calls for crossing guards? I thought, I didn't think that we should have to share. We're sharing that with um, Upland Girls crossing guards. Is that something new? No, it's a statutory requirement that the municipality and the, the municipality employs and pays the crossing guard and school districts reimburse up to 50% of the cost for crossing guards. Okay. And then um, I noticed that there are a lot of, and maybe this is the first time I've ever seen, so many people that were voting for the, for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit Board of Directors. Is that something that all these different names? Is there someone from Chester who represents the Delaware County and the media Union? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Green. Mr. Mr. Seaver, I'm sorry to interrupt, but for the public, if you could ask, uh, use your whole three minutes up to ask every question and statement. That way it's easier for me to keep time to okay. make sure everybody has their fair allotment. And then, you know, uh, All right, so I'm asking up. about C7, C8, what is that? C9 and 10, 11 and 12. So there, I just, was questioning why we are voting on these people who for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit. And then my last question was the same one Ms. Mosey was asking about um, C14. And what building evaluation and building addition are we referring to? And do we have money for this? Where was the process? We, we didn't know anything about it. So the intermediate, okay, thanks, Ms. Maya. The intermediate unit, I, I'm looking at you, Mr. Silas, you want to answer that, but that we do have a representat representation. Mr. Green is the appointee from Chester Upland. Each district, my understanding, has to approve when you submit who you're going to have represent your school district to the intermediate unit, and one is Delaware County Community College. Uh, there was a vacancy, and again, as a sponsoring school district, we have to approve when they appoint someone there, they, everyone has, every school district has to, you know, pass a resolution. Okay. And then C14, you'll respond within three days? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that ends public comment on action items only. And we will go through the agenda for approvals. 
Uh, at this time, I hereby approve the education agenda items A1 through A11. A1 through 11 are hereby approved. Under the personnel agenda, I hereby approve uh, action uh, agenda items B1 through B2. Action items B1 through B2 under the personnel agenda are hereby approved. Under the business agenda, action items C1 through C14 are hereby approved. Under the ESSER agenda, action items D1 through D5 are hereby approved. And under the policy agenda, action items E1 through E31 are hereby approved. On the supplemental agenda, action item A1 is hereby approved. At this time, public comment for, this is another sign-in sheet, for uh, general public comment, same rules apply, three minutes, state your name and address for the record, and we will respond within the three-day period. So we have first Mr. Lawrence Ham. That was the time Yeah, that's one Lawrence Ham, 37 West East Street, Chester, Pennsylvania. I don't have any questions. I just came tonight to applaud the administration, really. Uh, superintendent and uh, receiver, I think you're, you put a lot of <clears throat> measures in place going forward. And I just want to give you your kudos because as long as I've been coming and as long as I haven't been coming, you've met every meeting. You know, it's not like you cancel the meeting. Um, you take the heat. Um, you offer your number. And I think that's the most important thing that anybody can give of themselves is their telephone number these days. And uh, the only thing is we have a two-year contract. And I always look uh, at the big picture. And um, I don't know where we're going to go as we get into the contract for next year or whenever you want to entertain it. Uh, there's been some rumblings, uh, people talking in terms of the, the morale, you know. Um, it's just two years. I don't know what the next one will be. But uh, whatever you can do to solidify the staff, make them happy going forward. We don't need, uh, now that the year is over, to lose our set. I mean, that's all I want to say, you know, and share. Uh, but I, I just give kudos to the process right now. Um, and uh, I just look forward to uh, next year. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Mr. Neem Mosley. Thank you, Denise Mosley. I asked this prior at another meeting, but now that we're recording, I wanted to re-ask it. Do we have an estimate of the number of seniors to graduate in 2023 and that are not on target to graduate? What is our plan of recovery for those students? Um, I asked this at the last meeting I attended. We, I was told that all staff I uh, will receive some type of evaluation. I would like an update on where we are with that. If every staff person is being evaluated. Also, I um, want to mention I'm starting to see a lot of staff generated fundraising opportunities online using personal accounts and cash apps. I think we may need to review the staff what's acceptable. Also, when will the mass insight report findings be shared publicly and be posted? And then also, if we could also look at maybe restructuring the after school program to supplement efforts to help students increase in reading, math, and science. Thank you. Did I make it? Yeah. Right. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. <laughs> math, reading, and science, right? Yes, please. All right. Ms. Karen Meyer. <clears throat> Right. Um, 
are there any comms at Chester High School working? And if not, is there a plan in place for an emergency? Are we putting back emotional and supplemental classes that were originally in place? Are we hiring a new transitional coordinator for the next school year? Because I see that we're trying to hire one for the summer. Um, are we hiring a secondary ed supervisor for high school? Um, was the board aware of a posting for a principal at Chester High School and why is the school district human resources not being doing a search if we need a principal and why was the community not notified? Um, it is important that our counselors and teachers encourage our students to apply for scholarships. I think that we are in the same position that we were in last year. Um, I don't see it being done like it should be. And we still don't have enough janitors and security. That's it for me. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. Ms. Arnold, I almost missed you because of where you signed on the sheet. And your handwriting is immaculate. So I thought it was a part of the letterhead. <laughs> no, really, look at it. it looks... I started studying calligraphy when I was in high school and was able to take a class as an adult. Uh, could you please pass these around for me, sir? I want to say that I'm a bit offended with these three minutes that you require us to follow. It seems as if you do a better job at holding us to three minutes than we are able to hold you accountable for what your work is, uh, representing the district and the education of our children. So I want you to know that I'm a bit offended, and I don't get offended often about the three-minute rule. So I'm going to try to hold to that. but. Um, I want you to know going in my concerns about the rule. I think it's controlling and in some cases and it avoids the transparency that we need for the district. Having said that, I want to say too that our, our budget seems something like an amoeba. If you remember biology, you had that little one cell organism that had no firm structure around it and so it could move and change shapes. And I'm feeling that our budget does that too many times. Uh, one time we say our budget is, is uh, balanced, and then again we say we have a deficit. And so when we were at the court the other day, um, I think we said something about there was a $12 million deficit with our budget. And we also said in court that the Chester Open School District will never, ever be able to have the budgets supported by the community because of our tax structure and revenue needs. And as a result of that, we will always be in a position where the state would have to give us money so that we can operate. And I think I heard it mentioned that as a result, we would probably stay in receivership and they could not identify a school that has been uh, removed from receivership 100% was my understanding from court. And so I think that in the heart of being transparent, we need to say more to the public about what happened when we were in court in that regard. Um, the ESSA budget, I think we could use some details still on how we are spending the money for the three years. I have in front of me the document that was posted and it did give the three years. We knew the three years before we asked the question. The question that we needed answers for were more details about what had been spent those three years that we were allotted funds and what is left. That has not been made available to the public. And if you tell me that it's on the website, uh, it is not so easily found. And I've seen some numbers, some pages, but they're not so easily read. And I do read fairly well, and I do well sometimes with arithmetic. So I um, don't think I need a CPA to understand my question. Howie, uh, I'll, I'll yield you two more minutes, Ms. Arnold. Thank you. You are a receiver. And you're like king around here, so. You can do that. Thank you, sir. Um, the CTE pro the CET program, I'm one of the advisors, one of the advisors with that. And that program has never, ever since I've been involved, 
had a very comprehensive explanation of the budgets for at least the two programs that I'm involved with, and that is engineering and the one on communication and the STEM building. And I have gone through several directors, and those that have preceded Ms. Thompson uh, have had the same situation in terms of fully understanding what they have available for the budget, and I understand that a trip recently was canceled for some of the students at STEM because of some budget issues. So that's the reason why I keep referring to that budget as an amoeba, because one time it has a shape like one thing, and then we look around later, it changes shape. So I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned that the judge mentioned that we had made no substantial improvement in academics. We are doing an awful lot with buildings, and I said to you before, sir, about other receivers who did great things with buildings, whether we got rid of them or not, but we really need to educate our children. We are in the people business, and if we don't do that, then we have relegated the city of Chester to a state of poverty and what have you. We do not want to do that. So we've got to educate our children. 57% attendance rate uh, was mentioned in court, and that's a problem. We were not able to talk about a specific plan to turn that around. We have no math specialists, we have no science specialists on subjects that we test in for state tests, and we need to have assistance for our teachers in executing their instructions. We need to understand how did we get, and I know it's on page 12 of that document you promised us uh, last month, but the $30 million that we floated a bond for, for 1350 and 1450 sir, we need to have a better understanding about how that happened, uh, and what is the cost for the debt, when do we start to pay back, and all of that, and here's something else. We had an aviation project that we heard a great deal about, uh, how they said that our students had it, and we haven't heard any more about it since then. So what I'm wondering is, well, how can we follow through on that particular item? Uh, um, sorry, Ms. Hunter. Just uh, informing the receiver that the, the extended two minutes has expired, I defer to you, uh, receiver. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. We will most certainly answer your questions in, in the near future. I'll elaborate a little bit more about court. Before I sit, take my seat, I want to continue to believe I want to continue to trust, and right now, my morale is not eroding, but my belief and trust both are eroding. Sir, please don't let it get too low. I want to believe, because I was in court when you came and said you wanted to run our school district. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. And unfortunately, we're in this unique situation. I'm, not, I'm just giving a general comment. Unique situation about receivership, this district, and I'll go back to when I decided to throw my hat in the ring to become receiver because I was frustrated about the constant turnover of people who just came and went, came and went. Didn't think that, they, that Judge Dozier would even consider me, but he did. And um, I have to say, I agree with you on some things, but this, this place, I'm a product of it, has been in disarray for decades for decades and uh, uh, at times, and I, I don't take anything personal, I, I expect that you help hold me to a different standard than you did my predecessors because I'm a product of this environment. But it's going to take some time. There's some progress being made. It's slow and it's steady. There are some wins. Chester City, unfortunately, one thing that I did mention in court, Ms. Arnold, is of the parcels that are assessed here, only 48% of them are taxable. We have the lowest assessed value in the county, in the state, really. We do. So we're a normal school district. And I'm not saying that we're abnormal. Plus, other school districts, when they receive tax dollars from their residents, it equates to about 60 to 70% of their budget. Or for us, it's only about 10 to 12% of our budget. So we already are behind the eight ball, unfortunately, when it comes to the finances of our district. We have a lot of uh, nonprofits. We have so many churches here that have tax exempt status. We have a, a university. We have a, a housing authority that owns a, a lot of land here. And in the school district, a, a, a soccer stadium that the county owns, unfortunately, that's exempt from taxes. And I'm not saying that that's uh, an excuse, but it just makes the dance a little harder. 
it just makes the dance a little harder. What we need to do and what we plan to do and what we are doing is leveraging additional resources to bring dollars here into this, uh, this district. Unfortunately, again, uh, I'm just, just talking, re-engaging uh, uh, partners for Chester Upland School District. There were a lot of trust issues. Ms. Arnold is right. We talked about that in reports and in court and everything else. I won't name anchor institutions, but there were people that would not talk to Chester Upland, but now they're talking and they're providing things and it's going to take time. We're still building trust. I will even say for the record, PDE, I know you watch this all the time, but PDE said out of their own mouths that this is the first time that they've seen uh, or, or the trust has been built and gained and, and we're moving in the right direction and they're providing some more resources, but again, it's slow and it's steady. You know, would I like more resources from PDD? Absolutely, financial I'm talking. But I guess they, they have to trust me, they have to trust the process, they have to trust the administration and we're getting there. The Mass Insight report is close to uh, conclusion. That will be concluded in May. It will be readily accessible for the community in May. PDE paid for it. They were initially not going to pay for it, but now they decided that they would. They're in the process of uh, coordinating a financial team uh, with another organization that they're going to pay for so that we can move on to the next process of doing a, a amended recovery plan that will be detailed and it will be the roadmap to success. They also said that in court. They named two other school districts that they, the status moved, they didn't move out of receivership, but their status moved closer out of receivership. And they talked about that recovery plan that was a roadmap to success that was followed, you know, day in and day out, had the deliverables in them. The recovery plan that was here when I got here and I said it in the courtroom, it was baloney. It didn't have any teeth. It was, the finance section was literally 20 pages. That should just be what we talk about with, with teacher contracts, th those 20 pages. So, so it, it's brain surgery. We, we, we're in critical condition. We're bleeding out. We're doing everything, but we're trying to do what we can do to bring this thing back to life. Uh, our, I'm here for the children. I think everyone at this table, even you, I applaud you know, you Miss Arnold, Miss Mosley, uh, Mr. Ham, Miss Maya, you, you're the constants that come here and, and you get it. You know, you, you'll be here when I'm not here, I'm sure. That's true. You will be here when I'm not here. So I, I, I get that. Um, but I'm not going too far because I'm That's always going to be around, trust right. and believe. And we know where you live. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and somebody said something about the phone, it never stops ringing. You know, it's ringing now. But. But the point I want to make is, in court, yes, there were things stated about the finances. And we, when you, when you play with numbers all day, and, and young Miss Mosley will tell you, you always say, as of this date. Because as of that date, we could have had $20 million in the bank because of the circumstances and situations at that time. But as you move on and things happen, things happen. We've had so many unforeseen situations pop up. I sat in this room, I said to the public, it's on, on the record, it's in a report. I was in this room and I got a call from upstairs. They said the federal government is here and they need to talk to someone. It was the IRS because the district did not pay an old IRS bill from six years ago. Wow. That's that was six figures. Wow. It wasn't in this budget. It wasn't in a projection or anything, but it was some, it's the IRS. We have to pay it. We had a state obligation, six figures from something four years ago. Uh, a vendor, and I can go on and on, and I'm not, again, making excuses, but I'm talking about the reality of what Chester Upland faced, and this is sad and it's disheartening, it really is, because so many people have taken advantage of us, they really have. And we're trying what we can try to, to remedy the situation. I'm working with the receiver in the city to talk about how we talk about economic development because we need economic development to strengthen the tax base. We just do. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot. I can go on and on, but this new recovery plan will be much more detailed than you've ever seen before. I can assure you that, Ms. Arnold. Well, well everyone. Uh, I know I'm not just talking to Ms. Arnold, but I can assure you that, that it will be much more detailed. It will be a roadmap to success. I do not, I'll say it for the, I don't, I don't plan on being here long. I, I think I have two years and a month left for the appointment. If they have me that long, I'll stay that long. But after that, I don't think I'll be here that long. I, I really don't. I can't stroke out. 
I, I won't stroke out. And it, it's not that I'm giving up on it, but I could be using a different capacity is what I'll say. If the good Lord says that I need to stick around, I'll stay around because I follow his word and his will. But transparency, yes, we, we'll, we're trying our hardest to do the best we can. Town hall meetings, let's get some more on the books. We can do that. We can answer questions. We have an open door policy. People come in all day, every day. We talk to those individuals. I know some people say, well, they want to do it here on the camera. We record the meetings that we have. Walking Wednesdays, you have them. Troy, go in there walking Wednesdays so the cameras can see what the people are asking and they can kind of know what's what. I don't know what it is. But some people also, I feel like they need to do a little bit more and care a little bit more like you. I really do. Because the things that they call me about sometimes, I'm thinking we have a deficit here. Our children can't read. They don't know math. And you're calling me about this mundane thing. That's insane to me. So we need more people like you all that care to help us do what we need to do. And, and, and that's all, because I'm... I just went off a little bit. Right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, you felt. Well, you for the applause, sir. No, I don't, I don't, I don't want an applause. No, no, no. We have something called law, uh, um, youth court. We know youth court brings a change with our students and the good works. It is incomprehensible that we have not established youth court in this district yet. We have teachers upstairs. We have teachers at other places. We have our own folks who are getting results, and we have not expanded on that low-hanging fruit. We know how to teach children how to read. We have teachers who do great work with mathematics. And why we don't multiply what these people do right here on our own walls without calling in another consultant is beyond me. And what I'm saying, sir, if they gave us $10 million tomorrow, if we don't learn and do more about teaching our children to read, that $10 million will be a waste. So while we say globally resources, we need to look with detail with the talent that we have and use that. And I am terribly upset that we continue to not use the talent that we have to develop our children 100% and all of their intelligences. There's no excuse for that. We, I don't think our money problem is really our problem. It's a this problem and a this problem. Uh, Mr. Receiver, I, can I address the, the, um, the time limit? Oh, that shit you, you have is the, hold, hold, oh, no, stop. Um, the organizational chart on our website is what you have there, and I've highlighted some things that I think we need to change. Madam Receiver. Yes. I just wanted to address the, the time limit uh, because the suggestion was made that this we have time limits to uh, for control. Um, you know, as a lawyer at the table, under the law, the public has the, the right and is encouraged to give public comment, yeah. but they don't really specify how much time. Exactly. So the, the three minutes, actually, in the, I perform this role in another school district. This is the, the longest period that I've seen for, for comment. I mean, other school districts I represent two minutes, so you can imagine how many people get angry with me there when I uh, have to shut down conversation after two minutes. But I think that the reason that you have a time period of three minutes, and some people think that's not long enough, is designed to encourage as many people to come and speak as possible. And it's designed to create uh, uniformity. So if you're someone who wants to come to a meeting, but you know maybe someone speaks for 50 minutes or 60 minutes, and you just have one thing to say, then you may be discouraged from coming to the meeting because how are you going to speak? Um, so the three minutes is designed to give people an ample opportunity to, to say what's on their mind, give information back to the district, but also to encourage other people to come and be able to give uh, their comments. Um, and you don't want to have a situation where someone speaks for 10 minutes and then another person says, well, I only got to speak for 10. We want to create fairness. So that having the three minutes is a, a period of time that does both hopefully gives the, the public an opportunity to, to voice your opinion um, and your thoughts, but also to encourage other people to want to come and give their opinions and thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Stillis. Would you defer? Can I speak to that? One minute, Mr. <laughs> no. I hear all of that. It makes sense. 
that's in preparation if we get 50 to 100 people here. We don't have 50 to 100 people here. So the concerned individuals who come here should give the, be given the decency and the respect. Go to five minutes. And I've never made an issue of the three minutes. Because I've been at meetings where I feel it's the responsibility that you should be here and hear from the community as long as necessary. But that's another story. I've been there before. So you got to look at the situation for what it is. And I'm, I'm a, I play by the rules and I play by the game. But I'm just saying, you got to look at your community that you're serving. And that's just us. You see us in this room. We deserve the time. We deserve more than three minutes. But I'm not making an issue. I'm speaking to it because I'm responding to your statement. That doesn't happen here. You're not getting 100 people here. So three minutes can be changed to five minutes. It's at your discretion. We're talking discretion here. We're talking transparency. And I'm just saying I never, in all I'll speak, I never came to you at the three minutes and all that. But I'm just coming because this community have just the few speaking for the many. You gotta listen to us, that's the few. You got to give us our time. And I'm just asking that, to consider that. And we'll sit, and if you say no, okay. But well, this community that comes out, we deserve more than three minutes to speak, more than three minutes of your time to express what we feel. And that's from my heart of hearts. Thanks, but I'll Mr. sit down and I accept it, and I'll do it within decency in order of three minutes. But know the community you serve in. Thank you, Ms. Sam, I appreciate it. And I'm not going to tick for tack, I'm going to say this, and I'll, all of y'all know me, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> Anything emerging, I don't want you to wait once a month to come to stand in front of me to say what's going on. That's right. I don't want that. Like you said, or somebody said, you have my phone number, you know where I am, most of you meet with me, you come in my office, you meet with the superintendent. Don't use this as a platform to grandstand. What I'm saying, if it's a, I was about to go somewhere else, but if it's an emergent, come, talk, you know you can get any of us, and we can get it done. Because some things can't linger to next month. You know, low-hanging fruit, we can get some things done in between. N not pointing nobody out. I met with, with two people in this room just this week, and we accomplished a lot. In the 45 minutes that I had for you, because it's a lot of back and forth, I can't give you 45 minutes here. But when we met one-on-one, -on -one, we got a lot accomplished, me and those two individuals, a whole lot. So I, just saying that, peace and blessings. <laughs> Thank you.